In the past, you've heard me talk about how the exponential function is one to one and it has an inverse and how that inverse is now the logarithm. So what we want to do is we want to look at what an exponential function looks like. And we've already talked about this. We want to talk about the key characteristics of this guy. And since the logarithm is supposed to be the inverse, and that inverse looks like this, let's see what we know. Let's see what we can find out. All right, so for the exponential, we remember that the base has to be positive and the base cannot equal 1. And that's the same thing for the logarithm. The base of the logarithm has to be positive and it cannot equal 1. Simple enough. The key points that we have for the exponential function, when we we're putting all this together, we would plug in negative 1, 0, and 1. Plugging in negative 1 gave us the reciprocal of the base. Plugging in 0 gives us 1, and plugging in 1 gives us the base itself. Now, since we're supposed to be the inverse with the logarithm, that means that all of those ordered pairs get swapped around. Remember, x becomes y, y becomes x. So this guy becomes 1 over a is going to give you negative 1. You plug in 1 and you get 0. You plug in the base itself and you get 1. Because, again, x becomes y, y becomes x. For the exponential function, the domain was all real numbers, and the range was from 0, not including 0, uh, to infinity. Remember, we have a horizontal asymptote when it comes to exponential functions, and that horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. All right? So let's talk about what that means for the inverse, for the logarithm. Well, if the domain is negative infinity to infinity, that means that his range is going to be all real numbers. And if the range of the exponential is 0 to infinity, that means the domain of the logarithm is from 0 to infinity. Again, not including 0, which kind of matches up with, well, we'll get to that here in, in just a moment, why we can't include 0. Again, it's an it's a exponent thing. And the vertical asymptote, because you had a horizontal asymptote, is going to be x is equal to 0. So these are the, the main ideas. Uh, I want to point out something to you. Uh, for the exponential function, we talked about how 0, 1 was our anchor point. And for all the exponentials, you would always plot 0, 1 and kind of build from there. Well, flip that around for the logarithm. You're going to plot 1, 0 as your anchor and then build from there. So let's see what these graphs look like when we compare them to each other, knowing how to graph the exponential and knowing that the logarithm is the inverse. All right, so let's, let's do that. Oops, excuse me. All right. So here's our graphing grid. And we're going to first start off by doing our exponential. All right, so the exponential is the guy, let's, let's look at it this way. Let's do f of x is equal to 2 to the x. All right. So we start at 0, 1. And every step that we take, we double that distance. So times 2 gives me 2, times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. And we kind of cut that in 2 as we go to the left. So there's the 1 half, the 1 fourth, and so on. And so this was the shape that we had for our exponential looks like this. All right? Now notice those key points that we had. We have the key point 3, 8, 2, 4, 1, 2, and down here we have 0, 1. If we're going to graph the inverse, the inverse is going to have those coordinates swapped around. Okay? So it's going to have 1, 0, it's going to have 2, 1, it's going to have 4, 2, and it's going to have 8, 3, if we're looking at this as a logarithm base 2. Now, it's kind of weird to think about it, but it's almost like an exponential turned on its side. For the exponential, every step that I took, 1, 2, 4, 8, 
those y values kept doubling for the inverse, for the logarithm. Every step I go up, their horizontal distance from the y axis is doubling. So that's 1, 2, 4, 8, and so on. Which means as I go down, it's going to be 8. It's 4 units away from the y axis. 2, 1, cut that in half, cut that in half, and in half, and in half, and so on. Which means you're going to get closer and closer and closer to the y axis, but you are never going to actually touch the y axis. So this is what your logarithm looks like. And the purple one is what the exponential looks like. And another thing that we talked about when it came to inverses was how they were mirror images across the identity function. Right? That guy forms a, a mirror for those two guys. Now I said before how we can't include zero. I want you to think about what that looks like. If I ask you to evaluate log base 2 and I ask you to plug in 0 here, what does this equal? we got to think about it like this. You've got to think, all right, 2 raised to some power is going to equal 0. Well, the problem with that is that you can't raise 2 to a number to get 0. Look at this exponential. No matter what power you raise 2 to, um, it never equals zero. So this guy's never going to work out. So in this case, it's going to be undefined. Okay. So this is the basic shape. And in the next video, we're going to do a couple of graphs with these where we do some shifts and some you know translations, maybe some flips. So stick around. Let's see what that looks like.